Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Reed and the mannequin, Mr. Michael Hall. Thank you for tuning in to the Burgundy Zone. The Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. And the title of this episode is The Calm, and we have two great guests lined up for you guys coming up here momentarily. But for the time being, dude, we got to get a recap of everything that has transpired up until this point. Reed, free agency has been a kind of all over the place. Adding Austin Eckler, we got to hear from him uh, today. And then also we got to hear from Jameson Crowder returning, Jeremy Reeves. Cam Curl leaves as well, Kendall Fuller. What, right now, what is the state of Washington? Because there's been a lot of turnover. And there's other there's ways you can look at it because Washington has like 60-plus million in cap space remaining. How did they do in free agencies so far? I love it, obviously. I mean, I think most people, especially Commanders fans, obviously we love it. And I especially like the depth signings. Um, when you're making depth signings, there's really two types of players I feel like that you look at that have the best mm. chance of making an impact and making the roster, and that's guys that were undrafted and have have a chip on their shoulder and have panned out in the league, and guys that were former first round picks that or high round picks that have traits, and that's what you've been seeing a lot. But you know, like Noah Igbenogin, Cleland Farrell, Dante Fowler, uh, they were all high round picks, and then you got guys like Mike Davis, obviously who who's undrafted but has found a niche in the league. So I, I love the way that they're filling the roster, and it's these guys that are already under contract, it's kind of telling them like after we saw guys like Cam, people that we loved, like, you know, Curtis Samuel and all these people go and Kendall Fuller. It's like, don't think that you have a guaranteed roster, but when your contract's up, if you don't play well, and that's nothing against Cam. And obviously I think that this season they just wanted to, right. you know, uh, kind of write the ship a little bit and make the team in their image. But like to some of these other guys, it's like, if you're not producing when your contract's up or you're not fitting in with the team, then we're not scared to kind of let you walk. I love the way that they've been doing it. And, Hey, you know, I'm I'm an Adam Peters guy. I'm a Dan Quinn guy. I've always been a Dan Quinn guy. He was the guy who I wanted the most. I definitely never said, if we hire Dan Quinn, I'm going to be so pissed. Yeah, I that, love what they're doing. That backwards hat tells the entire tale, uh, does it? But we had this uh, fan submission question on YouTube um, by Home Reap. And I appreciate he commented on our last video. And he said this. He said, I'm sure you've heard already, but Justin Fields was traded to Pittsburgh for chump change. So given that, don't still believe the Bears are going to or even willing to trade their number one overall pick for a haul to anyone, never mind the Redskins for any amount of capital. I'm just not seeing it as a real-world possibility anymore, not le- not even less than 1%. Quarterback is just too important. The only way I see us getting Caleb Williams, and I believe he's something special as well, is if the Bears balk and pick someone else. What are your guys' thoughts? I'm very interested in hearing what you have to say. Thanks for this podcast. It's my first time listening. I really enjoyed it. Blessings. Thank you, yeah. Rick. What do you think? No, oh, yeah, dude, hundred. I completely agree, hundred percent. They're they're going quarterback. Ninety eight percent chance it's Caleb Williams. I would imagine, unless they the one I could see them falling in love with Jaden Daniels. But the only thing is, he's kind of similar to Justin Fields. Obviously, he's a better throw of the football, but like with the speed aspect and stuff. Uh, so maybe like maybe an off chance they fall in love with him and they're like, hey, this is our guy. But I don't see that happening. I, they're, it's Caleb Williams. It's Caleb Williams or bust for them. They're not going to trade back. Ever since they got rid of Justin Fields, they're taking Caleb Williams at number one for sure quararback 99.9 percent sure it's Caleb Williams so I I completely agree with everything that he said we're we're focused on the King Drake May and the other King Jaden Daniels right now we're we're very lucky to be in a position to get either one of those guys yeah and I loved how you brought up uh, Mike Davis obviously him (laughs) coming from the Chargers hasn't been all that hasn't produced last season I read some things where they were rotating him and JC Jackson a heck of a whole lot. And he said it was kind of taking him out of his rhythm um, throughout the season. And then because of that, they took a step back. And so they traded away Jackson. And then still, even to that point, Davis still didn't progress. And so Staley ended up benching him. But that's one of those opportunities because he's 6'2", 190 pounds. He's, he's tied for sixth since 2019 in pass breakups in the entire NFL. Yeah, so he's the sort of guy that you're looking at to say, like, that fits the secondary mold. The of traits what, that they of yeah. like, exactly of what Witt and Quinn like of their corners, the and so I, corners. absolutely. And then no, uh, Noah, uh, the former first round pick of the Dolphins, coming here 5'11", 197 pounds. He's twenty four years old, but he only has five career starts in his stay. But the fact is, you're you're throwing spaghetti's at the wall at this point. But what's up, Hall? Glad to see you back, man. You were a mm-hmm. mannequin there for a little bit. 
I thought I thought you were guff giving us guff. I thought you were tricking us. I thought it was like <laughs> any second you could open your eyes. Or I did think there was an off chance you could fall forward and there would be an arrow sticking out of the back of your head or something. <laughs> he know. did say that. See, That's a hundred percent fact. Yeah. He did say that. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my Wi Fi. I was tripping out for a minute, but back. Back like I never left. Yes. Yeah. I wanted, I asked, Tell him to bring my call in. Uh, I asked Reed this question basically and what the question that was submitted by this guy on uh, YouTube basically what are your thoughts because he doesn't believe that the Bears are going to trade away their number one overall pick Um, so the only way they see us getting Caleb Williams is if the Bears do not pick Caleb Williams Um, what are your thoughts on that um yeah I mean I'm with them trading Justin Fields or the Steelers over the weekend I think it's a pretty much I mean, obviously, it's not a done deal, but I would say it's a 99.5% chance that they're going to draft Caleb Williams. Um, obviously, he's the number one overall quarterback that everyone's been talking about in this draft. Uh, so I think that they go that route. And the off chance they do draft a guy like Drake May or Jaden Daniels, then that would be the only way that, uh, that he would uh, be able to come to Washington. Is I don't see them trying to – obviously, I don't think they're going to trade up to get Caleb Williams. So – yeah, um, if Jaden or Jaden, if Justin Fields was uh, still on the roster, come whatever time the draft starts, eight o'clock, eight o five, whenever the first pick is on the clock, then maybe I could see them going either way with it. But them sending Justin Fields out pretty much signifies to me that they're going Caleb Williams at number one. Yeah, and Reap, I'll, I will say this: like the way that they're built, right? They traded for Keenan Allen, and one of the pro comps of Drake May so far in this draft cycle has been Justin Herbert. And so the conspiracy mind could say, is there a possibility that the Bears could draft Drake May number one overall? Their team is kind of built for that Justin Herbert like comp. I guess that's one way you could say why they would pick somebody like Drake May over Caleb Williams. Um, and that's one thing I don't think is out of the realm of possibility. And I think you're right about not trading back. I think at this point um, right now, Washington, their quarterback room is Marcus Mariota and Jake Fromm. So I don't think they're in the position to trade back as much as we like to talk about Adam Peters and what he learned in San Francisco. Fact of the matter is simple. We need a new identity and we're in the great position to be able to do that at the second overall pick. And we expect that they'll be able to do that. I, I do think that there is a small glimmer of hope that Caleb could come here at two, um, but I'm just not 100% sure. But he has done a very good job of making sure that Chicago knows that he doesn't want to go there without actually publicly saying it. Because I'm sure the NFL does not want their quarterbacks trashing their franchises before right. the draft. Right. It, like I said, I, I feel like the one quarterback like that would probably be easiest for them to fall in love with would be a Jaden Daniels. Just like that speed, that the fact that he can throw, the, the fact that he's so experienced. Maybe and coming off a of Heisman season, maybe, but there that's like a point zero two percent chance that they're taking Caleb. Caleb Caleb's going to Chicago unless he forces his way out of there. Yeah, no, I will say this. Uh, they sold that man for a pack of new ports, which is absolutely crazy. A sixth round pick in 2025. Which they is... said that they did it looking out for him because that's the, the place that he wanted to go. And they were trying to be fair to him and be like, look, you can pick one of these teams. And they turned down more from other teams. But who knows if they did good for them? I mean, that's cool. I mean, that's kind of stupid. That <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah. A team that, nothing to do with your team anymore. You're I mean, like, hey, a team that only has five picks in this draft. Right. You yeah. have the quarterback. I understand you want to do right by Justin, but in the yeah. end game, is that truly going to help you? Uh, and did Justin run? do right by you by being your franchise quarterback? I don't think so. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in this position. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, who are you? right? Who are we now? Let's go to our next question before we are joined by our neck our guest here. This one's from the Colonel, who I saw this weekend in Jupiter, Florida. One heck of a, a drive. Um, what a king! So uh, on the way down there, by the way, we we saw a SpaceX launch in Florida, and it was hysterical. I recorded it and posted it to Twitter. You can go to my bur uh, Twitter at the Burgundy Zone and see it. But um, <laughs> we saw a rocket, like we saw an orange light just hanging in the because it's dark out. We're on ninety five going south. And we see this orange light. And I was like, what the heck is that, dude? You said it's finally happening. I'm seeing so a UFO. I started recording it. I started recording it, and it looked like it was sitting still. And then it's it looked like it was starting to rise. My wife started saying it's a UFO. And at the end of it, I'm like, no, 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 that's SpaceX, dude. Where we are, we're driving down. We're in Florida. You're that's in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Florida. Yeah. So I looked it up, and SpaceX had just launched uh, new satellites into or low orbit. And it was cool because you got to see the satellite like trail off like like it was like picking up curving yeah, yeah. it was that really was cool curving. man that's but sick it, yeah remember when that remember when that flat earther dude tried to prove that the earth w was flat by launching a rocket into space that he a self-made one we talked about it on like the, <laughs> one of the, like the first 
yeah, six I months we'd started the show. That was so funny. He was but, some homeless looking dude. Yeah, and he failed I think obviously. He, I think he ended up passing away from one of the testing. I'm, I might be I, wrong about that. Yeah, no, I think he passed away from trying to fly a rocket ship with no experience. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go to our let's go to the colonel for this question. Why Marcus Mariota Reed? Does he have history with any of our new coaches? Um, no, I don't think he. Brian does. Johnson. Oh yeah, yeah, Brian. That's yeah. See, there you go. He does have history with Brian Johnson. Plus, I mean, just when you look at Mariota, obviously, I mean, he was a high pick. I know that was a while ago, but like he has tools. Obviously, I mean, he, he's big. He can, he can. There he is. There's my king. He's athletic. Uh, he's a veteran. He's been around for a long time. I, I think it just makes sense with with a young quarterback in here, and if he knows Brian Johnson and stuff i think that they just felt comfortable with somebody like that Absol- absolutely now we are joined by our Plus guest the funniest guy in the room mr michael phillips yeah how are, you, how are you doing on this beautiful monday evening sir doing great thanks for inviting me in uh good times ahead i'm sure and uh uh just uh sitting down to the chase young news right here uh 13, what happened with chase 13 million dollars one year new new orleans saints so he uh reunites with montez sweat i believe right there you go was, well, was no, Ma- Montez no, is in Montez Chicago. Chicago. No, Montez in Chicago. That's right. Um, he, he reunites with Pete Warner and Chris Olave from Ohio State. Ooh, there's Ohio State guys everywhere. Uh, one yeah. year, thirteen million. I'm, I'm gonna declare it. That's better than I thought he'd do. That's way better yeah. than I thought he'd. Yeah, good for Chase, man. Oh yeah, it, good for him. Hopefully he can. Hopefully he can bounce back. Have a good. I am hundred percent rooting for Chase to have success. In the Same. Lineup. Yeah. Me yeah. as well, sir. Now the question we got to ask you because. A lot of departures happened in this offseason, a lot of turnover for this roster, Michael. But the value of the Sam Howell trade, it, because a lot of people say it's not worth it, because right now your quarterbacks, you had the rookie contract. That's cheap, and that's valuable in itself to have Sam as a backup. But what is the value of trading Sam Howell, and do you agree with it? You know, I, if I were the general manager, if I were Adam Peters, I'm not, by the way, I would have kept him. You sure? Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think the value represents – enough that I would say this is worth not having Sam Howell on my roster, on my team. Uh, on the other hand, uh, look, everybody's gone. Uh, you nailed it. I, and sometimes we overplay like, oh, the team's changing. You know, it's the off season. It's a new roster. We're not here. Uh, it's, it's a whole new roster. Everybody sees it. Um, Cam Curl ended up on a very affordable contract. Gone. Uh, you know, uh, Logan Thomas, guy who they could have re-signed. Gone. Kendall Fuller. Gone. Um, all these guys who, who were like the fringe guys, like, will they stay? Won't they stay? Uh, are pretty much all gone. Like F.A. Obata is in, in the state club. And that's kind of about what we're working with there. Right. Uh, you know, it's just a very small handful of guys. Um, they clearly want to turn over the whole room. Um, and, and they were four and 13 last year. They were bad last year. Uh, so it, it's hard to, it's hard to say, no, you got to hang on to people like this or that. Like, they're four and thirteen. They were bad. Adam Peters has a plan. Uh, in in Adam we trust uh, is the motto I think because he knows what he's doing. He's had a good free agency so far. If he wants Sam Howell out of here for a fresh start, it's hard to argue with that. Uh, not the move I would have made, but I'm I'm giving him my blank check of trust right now. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of a, a new leaf, what the, obviously there's quarterback that right now is that's the biggest need on the team. Uh, then you look at you got to look at left tackle. Uh, I mean, there's no Charles Leno there. There's no veteran. There, there's nobody there that can really come out and start. Uh, everybody's assuming that we're going to draft one. I would imagine so, uh, round two or trade up. But if not, if there's a veteran, is there any veterans or anybody out there that you think that they can bring in to come in and compete, or at least just be a solid body in there? Yeah, it's just a pretty easy answer for me. No, I'm not inspired yeah. by anybody out there. Um, I'm I'm very surprised Tyron Smith's not here, especially after seeing the terms of his contract. Uh, that was obviously a number they could have afforded on a term they could have afforded. That tells me Dan Quinn had a question mark there, right? Dan Quinn obviously knew him very well in Dallas. Um, so it, it, him not signing at that price tells me Dan Quinn knew something. He said, I, I, nah, that's not my guy. I don't want him here. Uh, I would not be surprised, and no inside info here, just – wouldn't surprise me if they package some picks, get back into the first to get a guy right, get it, get that five-year deal. There could be eight offensive back. tackles going in round one. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just it, it's it's this is the time to do it. This is the need, and if you're going to start your second overall pick on day one, and gosh, it sure looks that way. We sure seem to be trending that way. Yeah, I want him upright for 17 mm-hmm. games. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm a little picky. Maybe I'm a little demanding. Mm-hmm. I prefer he remain upright. 
And also, <laughs> real, if you look at the free agents, it's like Bakateri and DJ Humphreys that are out there, but they're both coming off pretty bad injuries, I'm, I'm pretty sure, right? See, like, the one uh, thing about so, David Bakhtiari is he got the ACL repair in 2020. I looked this up, but he the actual original repair, he had to f- drain fluids from his knee more than anybody else on the Packers to date. And the reason was the original didn't get everything that it needed to. And so the big question of Bach is the medical check. If the medical check comes out and says that he actually did clean it up 100%, there might be something there. But that's why people are very... We all know yeah. he's going to play with the Jets anyway. So no, they, they, they signed Tyron Smith. How about, how about Morgan right. Moses, Tyron Smith? Jets making moves for yeah, Aaron Rodgers. I Don't know. Like yeah. Box not going players. there. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. forgot they t- signed Tyron Smith. You're right about that. But anyway... So you uh, you mentioned a blank issue of uh, tr- a blank check of trust. Do you trust that? Because they didn't really sign. Obviously, they everyone knew this. They weren't going to sign any like superstars type, uh, type players. But do you trust the the kind of the Armstrongs, the Fowler Juniors of the world to uh, be able to turn this defense around, or do you think that uh, more help is on the way via the draft or maybe some other depth guys through free agency? Man, you know, blank check, but again, it's like, oh, that's that's not what I would have done, right? Um, you know, <laughs> you know, you look at what the Eagles d- did, for example. You know, Bryce Huff would have loved Bryce Huff and Burgundy right. and Gold, right? That would have been fun, uh, and they could have afforded it, but uh, obviously not the plan. Uh, Adam Peters working off a long-term plan doesn't mean I wouldn't wouldn't have loved seeing it. Um, I do think you've seen a lot of mid-range signings on the defense. And I think that's that's the unit you're looking to improve right away, which is a real indictment of the Ron Rivera era, obviously. Dude was a defensive guy, and, right. and Dan Quinn comes in, turns over the defense. That's not a good look in any way for Ron. Um, but in, in terms of how can you get this team from four wins to eight wins next year, right? Um, you know, with a, with a schedule that, that decreases in, in strength, defense is probably the direction you're looking at to do that. I, you know, they have the draft picks, but I think the offense is probably – you know, a year away, you'd be looking at them to make the stride in 25 to catch up with the defense. But if Dan Quinn's what you think he is and these defensive coaches you've brought in are who you think they are, I think that's the logical place to make the investment to get the team better right now. I think that's what you've seen with a lot of these signings. I don't know that they think a lot of these guys are slam dunks. I think Mm. uh, you look at these contracts, there's a lot of mid-range money, easy outs, things of that nature. Uh, I think they're leaving themselves the wiggle room to be wrong. May, I don't know what their internal percentage is. I'm sure Adam Peters would have an answer if you asked him like for real and not in front of a microphone. Like mm-hmm. I'd love to hit on 60% of these guys or whatever. Uh, but the number is not 100 for sure. No, and it's one of the things I've always said as a GM about throwing spaghetti at the wall and just seeing what sticks. And that's essentially what they've done through free agency. So that being said, Michael, what does all of these signings in free agency tell you? Or And to add on to that, with those signings, do you think that Washington is sort of starting a, a new identity? And what would that be? Yeah, you know, and spaghetti is great, but sometimes I want a nice chicken parm. You know? Sometimes <laughs> yeah. I want a nice price. I chicken love chicken parm. parm. I, I will munch some chicken parm, dude. That's that's like once a week I will destroy some chicken parm. <laughs> I'm munch that so hard. Yeah. Uh, but they're they're still shopping at the uh, spaghetti noodle store for the moment. <laughs> um, I, I I'm curious. I think the quarterback dictates so much of the identity, right? We're waiting to see who that is and, and build around that. And right. uh, I, I'm very curious to see what Kingsbury brings to the table, right? I've I've been kind of openly pessimistic on that one in terms of his track record in the NFL. But at the same time, I would love for him to come in, just start dominating, to you know, be refreshed, ready, build that identity. Um, I don't know that I see the identity yet. Um, I think this will be a team in transition all year, but I think you can be a team in transition in the NFL and, and not go four and 13 either. So I, I think that's kind of the goal here. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of needs, what needs to be done, I mean, with what they've done in free agency, how would you, I mean, we talked about quarterback, left tackle. What else, what other needs would you say that there are? I mean, receiver, corner tend to be popular ones. What else what, what would you say is out there? No doubt, tight end. Um, Eugene Shen's the analytics guy now, right? He is a big believer in the tight end as a yep. value position and also a position that can help you compensate for not having a great left tackle or a developing left tackle, right? right. Uh, I think that was behind the Austin Eckler signing, right? You, you've know, you got the quarterback and there's only so much you can do with a rookie quarterback. How do you put pieces around him so his first year in the league gets easier? 
Austin Eckler's a great piece to put around a young quarterback to make his first year in the league easier. You go get an experienced center. You go get experienced offensive linemen. Uh, and I think I think ultimately you you swing big on a tight end. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see them in that market. Um, I, I you know I I'm very curious how the rest of the market will shake out. Um, they don't need to move, but they can move. Um, they're certainly flexible enough, even with all these signings, they can make any move they want to make. Um, so they, they won't be restricted in any way. I'm, I'm curious to see how the rest of free agency goes for these guys. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously you're on, you're on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it nowadays. You're either on one side or you're on the other side. You, you can't be in the middle or there's, you know, you get the, you get the knives pulled on you, but so in the quarterback war of Drake May and uh, Jaden Daniels, which side are you choosing on about I've, five weeks away from the draft at this point? I have a very firm opinion on the matter. I have two very firm opinions on the matter. Yes. Oh, no. Opinion number one, I'm turning in the card. I'm not trading back. I'm at number two, and that I want to take opinion. a quarterback, and I want to take a swing for it. Uh, if, if everything goes right, you're never going to have this chance again under Adam Peters, right? Um, you know, you're not anticipating being back here. This is not a team I'm anticipating to win for next year. You got the chance right now. Take it. Number two, this is less popular. I am not starting that quarterback week one. Uh, now, the Mariota mm. thing, I, I don't, I'm not saying like, oh, I'd love for Marcus Mariota to be my starter uh, week one. Uh, Sam Howell's gone, obviously. Um, I'm letting that guy sit and develop. I'm doing this the right way. That's that's how the, that's how the good organizations do it. They give the guy a little time, they build, they grow around him. I don't think that will happen, uh, but that that's how I would do it. Um, I have always been a Jaden Daniels guy, but that is a slight lean, not a not a you know. I don't I don't go to war off enough on on the artist formerly known as Twitter. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> they took Drake May. I go like this. All right, let's rock. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot to like there. Uh, you know, and the people, oh, that's just Sam Howell 2.0, like absolutely not that's a really good quarterback uh Jaden Daniels uh my one concern is a, every time he gets hit it looks like a Looney Tunes cartoon and he's got like <laughs> limbs playing all over the place I don't Hi, know I'm Johnny Knoxville um but a, I love everything about his game the way he makes plays the way he works off schedule don't sleep on his arm it's so good um, if they turn in the card at two for JJ McCarthy, uh, I, I don't, I just, man, nobody knows anything anymore. Uh, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> Michael. Well, sure. Why not? Um, you know, I, everybody's trying to push this McCarthy into the top five thing. I, he hadn't done anything. Um, doesn't mean he won't be great. Uh, means, means he didn't do anything at Michigan. Um, that that's the mystery box here. I'm very curious about that one as well. Um, if, if they want to trade back to three, or if they love McCarthy, if they want to trade back to four or five, sure, that's fine. But I'm I'm not I'm not leaving that first hour of the draft without a quarterback. So um, so you're willing to wait for them to develop. So basically, what you're telling me is you're an oven guy. You're not a microwave guy. You're guys, willing to wait for it to be better as, as uh, opposed to popping it in the microwave and zapping it real fast. And when you get a Stouffer's lasagna, you're putting it in the oven. You're not zapping. <laughs> it, right? Makes me think of a phrase, trust the process, right? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Michael. Now, to wrap this up, I only have a couple more questions for you, sir. But do you have the latest news on the stadium? Um, You know, because it's with draft season, it's hard to kind of keep up yeah. with everything. It seems like there's been some good news about RFK. If you could include it and fill us in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very good news on RFK, right? Uh, school it does not the vaccine. Remember, I'm just y'all remember the Schoolhouse Rock video, right? The bill goes to the House, goes to the Senate, goes to the yeah. President. Um, the bill's gone to the House and passed. Um, okay. It's in the Senate now. Um, what they don't show in the Schoolhouse Rock video is it's an enormously dysfunctional government right now. Uh, <laughs> things don't move quickly, uh, which is frustrating for Josh Harris and his group, who would like to build a stadium and start making money and playing in that stadium as quickly as possible. Didn't he ask Aaron Rodgers to be his vice president? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. In, in the Rodgers presidency, yeah, I like our chances. Uh, yeah. <laughs> presidency. Um, so it's got to go through the Senate and pass. I do believe the president would sign it if it made it to his desk. And then the fun starts. D.C. City Council negotiates with Josh Harris over how much money they're going to give. And the neighborhood pitches its fit. Um, we're early in this ball game. Uh, the good news is they've gotten further than the last guy got. Uh, right. Last guy didn't get this far. Um, so that's reason to be optimistic. If you were to ask me to put a date on it, um, which you didn't ask, but I'm asking myself and I'm asking myself a question I don't like. Um, I don't know two years from now to get to get RFK across the finish line politically with everything you need. If you get it done, 
Um, we're, we're not moving at a rapid pace here. We're not in the microwave here for sure with, with RFK. Mm-hmm. I continue. And I just to- want to elaborate, Michael, real quick, just the two years you're saying to even get rights to start digging. That's correct. To, 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 to put a shovel in the ground, right. I think is two years away in a best case scenario. Um, Maryland's money's on the table. Uh, sorry to anybody I offend. I think Landover is a stupid place to have a stadium. Um, if they want to, <laughs> <laughs> if they want to build it, they want to build a national harbor or something. Knock yourselves out. Um, I, I just don't like the site at all. Um, it's it's not close to a metro. It's not good. Um, so the Maryland's money's on the table. Um, if the monumental thing falls through, which it's trending towards, uh, Virginia's got a big old pile of money it could put on the table. That could be a late game changer. Uh, they've They've got a site too, honestly. Mm. Uh, Potomac Yards, uh, bring bring the team back after all that time. Uh, not to say it would work out any differently than it did for Monumental, but I'm I'm not sleeping on them being a player. I just think that the Harris Group wants RFK. I think everybody wants RFK. It's just a matter of actually getting it done. I got you. My next question for you: Washington has done a lot with edge. Um, you know, Dorrance Armstrong. They went out. Clellan Farrell. We talked about Dante Fowler. Already had a- Andre Jones and KJ Henry on the on the roster. Do you think that edge will still be a big priority in the draft, regardless of the spaghetti throwing? Yeah. So if they keep both the picks at the top of night two, right? Uh, I think we all agree one of them's an offensive lineman. Uh, feel free to shake your head no if you want to have a pointless argument with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I. I think the other one is logically an edge. Um, there's still talent there, hopefully, and, and you can get a guy. Now, if the board doesn't fall that way, don't force it, of course. But I, I think you've got to take a swing at a, a premier position when you have a, a draft pick that high up. So if they make both their picks at the top of night, two, I think that's a big if. There's a lot of trade scenarios that go both ways there. Um, I, I think I could see them turning in that second card for an edge. My man, last question I have for you. The rumor mill, uh, let, starting some new here. And late, latest rumor uh, regarding Washington or the draft, anything you've heard? Uh, just that I do think they're committed to picking. I don't think they're bluffing when, yeah. when you, you see these reports that, you know, it, it'd take a lot to budge them off a of number two. I think that's right. I, I, I guess, you know, there's always the fake trade proposals online. I love that as much as the next guy, <laughs> right? The one going around is the Vikings give yep. up 11, 20. Yeah, points. someone's making yeah, NBA yeah. trades on. Yeah, like they, yeah the like... NBA trade machine fired up 11, 23, yeah. next year's first and next year's second. Honestly, I wouldn't do it. And really? I it. Yeah, I, I mean, th- they need a quarterback. If you look at next, I know that it changes every year and because, you know, but but like next year's class isn't looking that good. You don't want to have a, a repeat of some of these, you know, the, the Kenny Pickett's draft class. You know what I'm saying? You, you can build a team without an elite quarterback. It's just right. really hard. Um, if the shortcut's available to you, take the shortcut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's funny. You can build a really good team without a quarterback, but you have to make sure you have a long enough leash to do that. In the NFL, it's hard to come by. We saw Rivera land three years, and it failed drastically. You also uh, have to have Kyle Shanahan calling plays for you, or else it's not going to yeah, 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 That's a good point. Yeah, Very good yeah, point. Yeah, I'm Valid point. <laughs> Michael, I can't thank you enough for joining us. Um, brother, before you get out of here, would you like to plug your social media handle in your show, just in case anybody watching hasn't followed you yet, sir, and would like to? Yeah, what am I? Michael P. and RVA, I think, on uh, on Twitter these days. Uh, we do a, a radio show 10 to noon every day in Richmond, 9, 10 a.m. Uh, a lot of basketball talk this week. Uh, we're riding hard with the JMU Dukes. Um, the podcast is MP on the mic. We put it up every day. Uh, we have some fun and uh, no writing at the moment, but I'm cooking up some stuff that I'll, I'll of course, be excited to share when it comes to fruition. Absolutely. Yes. And tell Nikki, uh, we, we hope everything is all right um, based on what happened <laughs> with that presser today. That was crazy. It's uh, boy, the mute button can be a dangerous game here. I, I'm, <laughs> I see there, but for the grace of God, go I. Uh, just uh, just lucky it hadn't been me. Dude, I, 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 I see I, people post, posting about it. What did she say? So respect to Nikki because that was a great joke, by the way, because it's something that I would uh-huh. say about my job too, you know. But I'll tell you after we let Michael go. Okay. Michael, have a good night, brother. <laughs> Take care, guys. Appreciate All right, it. Brother. All right, everybody, we spoke with the man, Mr. Michael Phillips. Um, Basically, what happened is they had the Zoom calls in with the new uh, free agents that were brought in. I forget. I think it might have been the Mike Davis. It was Farrell. It was Cleveland Farrell. Um, yeah. And Nikki was not on mute, and she was having a conversation with a coworker and saying that I haven't had a desk the entire time I've been here. Um, maybe they've uh, been waiting to fire me or something. And she was just making a joke to her coworker, and it was just really awkward because literally everybody like watching the live stream mm-hmm. of Farrell's presser heard it. And so she had to go on Twitter and make sure everyone knew that she wasn't actually if, fired. She was if like, anybody got a desk, it would be that queen. 
she goes <laughs> she's one of the only people you can trust around here you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. I, I respect nikki a lot yeah. um, but we had that question submitted by the colonel reed if you want to answer i know you got to go soon but he asked about marcus Marriott and the history with our coaching staff yeah i, I touched on it a little bit but we talked about brian johnson and uh I mean, hey, it's just he's a veteran. You want a veteran in the room uh, to kind of help guide whatever rookie quarterback that you have. And, I mean, both these guys, I know obviously Drake Mays or um, Jaden Daniels is more athletic. He's, he's more mobile. But both of these guys are, are athletic. They can use their legs. They, they can run around. They can get out of the pocket. They can do some things, keep their eyes downfield. And that, that's been Mariota's game his entire career. Now, is he good at it? No. But, <laughs> you know, he's a vet. He's a nice guy, too. Plus, I, I think I like the idea of building an entire football team of Samoans because they're such hard workers and, and they're such scary people. So, like, I'm all for that. Bring in as many of them as you can. Bring, bring me in Kingsley to and Mataya. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I think that the relationship with Tavita Pritchard probably played a big role in this as well. Um, when Mariota came in to sign his contract, one of the first people they hugged was Tavita Pritchard. I feel like there is a relationship there on top of what's here with Brian Johnson and also just the athletic background, the knowledge of the offense. Um, see you, Reed. Hey. See, you, see you, brother. Um, I, hey, that's, see you, haters. So I think it's an easy transition <laughs> for the coaching staff for them to be able to say, I, he knows what this offense is. I can teach it with him, be able to teach it to the younger guys, be able to get this ball rolling. And also Marcus it will be able to start at any moment's notice if you possibly need him to and just get the ball out where he needs to. But it's not going to like, it's not like somewhere he's going to blow the handles off. It's just somebody who's going to come in and orchestrate the offense. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, pretty much hit on everything. Like you talked about, or we talked about uh, Brian Johnson I think Marcus Mariota actually mentioned like Brian Johnson and how much he respected him, how much he liked working with him um, last year up in Philly. So whenever he got the call to come here, it was like kind of like, all right, yeah, no problem. And I think that also you want a guy like Marcus Mariota, because I, I talked about it on the last episode where you want a guy that already kind of understands his role as, hey, like right. I know that I'm here to kind of mentor this guy. And if I'm called upon to start week one or injury, whatever it might be, or if he's struggling, cool, I'm there for it. But I think I think he even talked about it in his press conference where he kind of like they told him that, hey, you're here to if we need you to step in and be the guy, cool, but you're really here to just bring the young guy along, mentor, and be that veteran in the room that we've needed for a, a while now. Kind of like Jacoby Brissett last year. You're except, absolutely right. Think, no, like I love Michael Phillips, but that's I agree with you in that breath is saying that there's no way. Like at this point, no disrespect to Marcus Mariota, very good quarterback. I could never be in the NFL and get to the point where he is. We all know that well established. Just saying that the new quarterback should be able to beat yeah, yeah, out yeah, yeah. Marcus Mariota. Oh yeah, without a doubt, he you definitely should. And if he if he can't, then then we, we got, got a little bit deeper <laughs> issues that are on our hands here. But um, yeah, I mean, like I said, if he starts. The first month of the season, I could definitely see that just because, like, they're like, we don't want to get him, give him too much too early. But again, more than likely, everyone knows this. He's going to be the starter with one. But yeah, I just think that Mariota knows uh, Brian Johnson and he just, he wanted to be on a team where he would be accepted and he knows his role. And so I think it uh, it's a good, good uh, signing. Yeah, it is, and we kind of talked about it briefly a couple weeks ago, but you can't, the backup quarterback, what you want, essentially, is the Chad Henney. What he did with Pat Mahomes when he came in that playoff game, led them down to a touchdown drive, and then Pat comes right in. Like that's what you, Knowing that that's all he's there for is to right. establish, do his job when he's asked to do it. And Honestly, it's not like I'm going to be a starter from here on out. That's just a dude that's ready for his opportunity. Yeah, I mean, he had some ups and downs, obviously, when he was with Atlanta, but, I mean, he was playing some – like kind of like man football average football like winning football like he was getting the falcons wins at some point so i mean it's not like it's all just gonna crash and burn to hell if mariota has to step in there and be the qb yes sir and now we are joined by our next guest uh lots of news Coach. lots of turnover this year this season and as a goodbye to everybody um just wanted wanted to bring on coach you know we coach is a good friend of this show he's been very supportive of us and we wanted to say uh, we really appreciate Coach and everything that he's done, but too much of the softness now. How you doing, Coach? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. How you guys doing? We're doing all right. Coming, man. I mean, I was uh, – for the first couple of weeks, I was kind of pissed off, not going to lie, uh, because I was like, yeah. what the heck's going on here? What's going on here? But, I mean, I kind of understand it all about the business aspect, but for you, Coach, as being a father, the free agency process, how was it like for you? It's almost like – uh, reliving the draft, you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. 
because uh, you know you you're hearing about a lot of interest, but you're just waiting on that phone, you know, to see who who's serious and, and everything. You know, Kyle, you shouldn't have been too shocked, man. But I told you a long time ago that Washington <laughs> acted like they had absolutely zero interest in it, in, in bringing him back. Well, you got to understand, Coach. I know you told me. I know you told me that, and I tried to. I tried. <laughs> I, I tried to warn people, like without saying it. You know what I'm saying, Coach? And like they were saying, like I don't know, man. Well, that sounds crazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah, all right, man. I'm just telling you. <laughs> don't. But Coach, like at this point, how excited are you about the future and everything you guys have going forward? Man, I, I am super excited, man. Uh, Cam's in LA right now, and. All the feedback that, you know, he's been giving us with, you know, meeting the coach and, you know, the expectations they have of him and what they want him to do there. And, you know, uh, it was just him away from repeating the Super Bowl, you know, a year ago. If he would have got there earlier, a lot of people felt they would have they repeated, you know. They just needed help on their back end. But, you know, so it's, it's excitement to just have that kind of talk around, you know. Uh, talk about you know a Super Bowl and and that's the goal you know and everything but uh I'm excited because he's excited the, the yeah. coach do you think that there was like if the, let's just say because I know that the contract was a two-year deal for Cam and so that would put him I think at 28 years old uh for the next time for his contract yeah. hopefully he does so well to the point where they extend him it, it doesn't come up but let's just say free agency yeah. did come up would would you guys be open to returning To Washington? Oh, yeah, I mean, shoot, the price is right. <laughs> That's all I wanted yeah, to hear. Yeah, you ain't lying. Money talks. Coach. Money talks. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's very few, and, and it might not be the ones that we think, but it's, 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 it's only about two teams in the whole NFL that I would probably be like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, but – and it's just the way they run business, you know. Right, right. And the, hi- the history of the way they have treated players and stuff. That is, that's the only reason I, I would want them to go there. But and you're, one of them, you're saying uh, Carolina and Dallas. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> they they, they pay you in Dallas. He's like, like, I don't want to go to Dallas. Yeah, Not, yeah. Well, no, no dudes no, are leaving. Dallas will cut the check. <laughs> then you you know, didn't hear they had made like they had made windows for their workout room and stuff and dudes were saying that it's like almost like a zoo at this point because people are coming up looking at them random people while they're working out and stuff oh, and they're like yeah. that's got to be weird as hell for players oh thank you froze he did froze I thought I froze I was like wait a minute let me pause here <laughs> let me pause see so see as soon as we bring up the star you're good, Coach. Uh, Keep going. You were you were frozen yeah. there for a little bit, Coach. Keep going. Oh, no, he's frozen again. <laughs> I was going to – the next oh, question okay. for you, Coach. Okay. Hey, My... Damn, it's like catching up right yes. now. I hate it when Zoom does this. Hold on, Coach. Hold on, hold on. Let's put you on pause for a second. Hall, real quick, before Coach comes back. Favorite camp curl memory before we I mean it's gotta be the uh the pick six or the yeah the pick six he had when he got the John Rand flipped into the end zone. Yep. I think that was what rookie year. So yeah, I mean that had to be number one off break. Well the the Zach Ertz uh pick that he had against the Eagles obviously was huge in itself and everything that he just I'm I'm gonna miss Cam, man, and everything that's happened. But coach, are you there? Yes, yes. Oh, there you are. Yeah, you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Favorite favorite just, memory in Washington? Favorite memory in Washington? Man, this... Uh, uh, of Cameron? Or just... Period. I guess it doesn't have to be. It can be anything. Well, I think one of his... his uh, one of my favorite plays while he was there... It's a couple of them, it, you know. It, maybe the McCaffrey when he was playing uh, Carolina, and he he got that stop. You know, they was going for the first down, and he prevented that first yeah. down hit. 
on, yeah, on yeah, yeah. that's one of my that's one of my favorite plays because the the awareness and and you know the ability ability for him to get over there and, and make that play. You know, a lot of people don't look. You know, that doesn't show up on on the stat sheet as anything but a tackle. But it's just plays like that, man. It's just big plays. And he's had a he's had a few of those. But that's one that I I really like. My man, coach. Last question I have for you, sir, before we get out of here, because I know your internet's killing us. But I know, how how, <laughs> how far off were we? Uh, actually, Washington offered more. What? No way. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. My buddy Donnie texted me today, and he was like, do you, I, because on my, I thought the incentives is what pushed it north. Okay, I got it. Was it about fit? I think it it might not have been about fit, uh, more than the unknown. Okay, just uh, just fresh you know, new start. I, I get it. You want a fresh new start? Yeah, the the unknown of of, of what? Because the biggest thing is, you know, uh, he wants to prove his ability to play safe. You know, and not just be a box safe. Okay, right. And I know that 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 was important. To, to the whole, you know, team fit and everything. And, you know, I, and I'm not sure what the conversation was with Washington. I didn't know, you know, if they just wanted him to be a box safety or a nickel or nothing like that. Uh, Tennessee was up there big time. I just heard we couldn't, you know, get no support uh, from one of the former coaches here at Washington uh, oh, on that no. deal. But, yeah. But that was going to be a spot. Tennessee was on him, on him big time. Uh, Damn, I would have loved that. Day. I don't know if you guys have ever been down there. It's beautiful. Down there. Oh, Nashville. Oh, hey, I've heard yeah. stories about Nashville and how it's a it's a really really good time. It's like it's like the old. It's, I guess you could say Austin, ta- Texas, has taken over for what Nashville was like bl- booming in the in the two thousand tens or so to speak. Yeah. Coach, last thing because you know I've seen people. Uh, talking on Twitter and social media, and you shouldn't pay it any mind. But people think that you kind of have the uh, that you might have this disdain, I guess, resentment um, for Washington. But so I wondered before we get out of here and say, you know, our goodbyes for a little while because it's not goodbye. We're gonna see you later on. Uh, whenever we play you guys, I'm gonna get you back on here. But like, <laughs> anything you just want to say, clear the air. Just uh, any final thing you want to say to Washington fans that are watching this? No, I have I have no. This thing, I know people always take, they, you know, I, and I, I got to clear it up. Sometimes when I post, I, I probably just got to blowing one. <laughs> you know, I, probably I probably didn't put all the words I meant to put in that. <laughs> you know, uh, like the one about the Kayla Williams thing. I mean, that's a good question. Somebody had brought it up. What if he did the Manning thing and said I did? You know, and, and I agree with what a lot of people said, you know. He come over here and be with a better coach, develop, get developing and stuff. But some people took that as I was dissing Washington. But I have no disdain that that's who gave my son a chance, right? A seventh round pick. That means every team was didn't see his skill set or his value. And Washington special teams coordinator. Was like, hey, I can get this guy on special teams. He's a dog, and that's what they recruited Cam. That's what they drafted Cameron for a special teams player. Right. Now I remember he was on special teams in the beginning, and then he just worked his way onto the field. They didn't even want to give him snaps. They didn't want to start him for the first couple games in the first two seasons. I think it was. He earned. He earned his reps. That's why I call him the hard hat worker, and that's why I respect the heck out of him. And you know, I'm really happy that he did end up getting what he deserved, you know, because that, that's what, what was most important, Coach, is making sure that you're comfortable long-term because you never know how long this is going to go on for, right, Coach? Yeah, you're right, right. And I think another thing with L.A. is I think they're giving him the, giving him the option. If he go out and ball out this year, they're willing to renego- renegotiate next year. Okay. Man, that's well, what's up. Dude, yeah. I'm so yeah. happy to hear that. No, we've already talked about Cam a little bit, but seriously, man, Coach, I know why you did everything that you did. 
and not everybody will be able to see that. Um, you're a great father, a great man. You've been not only supportive of your son throughout and done everything the right way, just be able to bring attention onto yourself, and that's awesome, especially for uh, yeah. your son, who's a seventh-round pick, who doesn't get all the glamour and fame as other uh, prospects do that Cam probably outperforms. But he worked his ass off, dude. He showed up when he did and uh, had a lot of – whenever Cam was on the field, I had confidence that he was going to play that day. And as a fan, that's yeah. all you that's all you can request. And, you know, you've served this country, and also you served this football team, sir, and you and your family. And I, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done and all the support. I can't wait Definitely. to be able to talk to you again in the future. I know it, we're yes. still, we're still yes. going to be close, Coach. I'm still going to annoy the hell out of you. But uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be as often. But I would like to see you down the road, sir. And I'm – Hopefully we do get to end up meeting one day because we still haven't been able to. We'd love to, sir. I am. Yeah. When, yes. Whenever hey, Washington what happened, play though? L.A. What happened? Reed found out I was coming on and decided to stay. <laughs> no, he's stay a, he's, I don't know what's up with that dude. dude can, can you imagine the goal on Reed? <laughs> what happened was he texted us, what? He texted us at 4.50 because we started recording at 5.15. And he said, I got, you got 25 minutes uh, with dad. And I was like, this guy, who, who is he? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing here uh, coach i can't thank you enough sir uh god bless you god bless you and your family you guys are you, awesome coach. dude i can't thank you for everything that you've done sir have a great evening enjoy the rest of your week and enjoy the off season tell cam to keep working out keep working keep kicking yeah. ass you know we got fans over here but just not when you guys play washington but hopefully we'll see you guys soon <laughs> i appreciate you guys too man you know i ain't seen the schedule yet if 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 we come there because what because i went to the game when washington played the rams in la last right, season right. yeah so that would mean what yeah. it has to be within the next two years and it depends on where they fall oh. in the division uh based on scheduling but oh. you never know with the nfl coach coach have a good night sir appreciate you man appreciate you, you coach all right Thank have you a good guys one. all right everybody we just spoke with the man mr coach curl probably last time for a long time which is unfortunate but yeah. always appreciate. Lisa, I'm still gonna annoy. I'm still gonna talk to him and annoy him on Twitter, though. I you always appreciate the relationships that you develop. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about social media and how negative and toxic it is. But honestly, dude, there's a lot of great people out there that you meet, and it's just kind of oh, a yeah. needle in the haystack kind of thing. And you got to understand people a little bit to understand what they're that are coming from. And it's it's really cool to be able to build those relationships. But to wrap this up, brother, let's answer some fan questions that were submitted in the Discord app. This one is submitted by, I believe this was going to be by Tim Towner, which I'm not mistaken. Will Minnesota try and trade with Washington? Yeah, I'm sure they'll try, and we'll probably tell them no, and they'll just move right down the board to New England, see what they're uh, see what they're talking about, see if they want to make a move. If they say no, they'll move right down the board to Arizona, and they'll get on the phone with them. I think it'll be between New England and Arizona if they're going to uh, get up into the top five. It'll be through one of those two teams. Yeah, dude, they can try all they want. Um, you can try till the, you're blue in the face. Unless you attach Justin Jefferson on that tag, you're not getting – yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, they'll try, Tim. I'm sure they will, and I'm sure other teams have tried too, like the Chargers, for instance. Like I, I've heard people speculate about the J.J. McCarthy and uh, um, Harbaugh thing. Totally think that that's a possibility. I also think it's a possibility that Tom Brady could be in love with J.J. McCarthy. Just being the Michigan quarterback kind of thing where he won a national championship. Tom Brady never did at Michigan. And you never know with that sort of thing. You know, Tom is – if Antonio Pierce could not say no to Tom Brady, like that's probably one of the only people that could tell Antonio Pierce what to do. And Antonio Pierce would say, yes, sir, you're absolutely Antonio right. Antonio Pierce wants Jaden Daniels. He wants to – because he coached him back at Arizona State. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just saying about the whole – I know. Tom Brady thing. Now, the next question from Tim Hall. Does Washington jump back into the first round, and what might that look like? Uh, Phillips had referenced that before. Yeah, I think that uh, once we uh, kept stockpiling a lot of these picks, they didn't address left tackle through free agency. So one would assume that if they really, really like a guy and they really think that he's not going to fall to them at 36, I could definitely see them trading back up to – let's call it 25 to 30 range, somewhere around there, depending on what team's there, how the, ball, how the board falls and shakes out. But I believe that it's about a 60% chance at this point, depending on if they really, really like a guy, that they're gonna probably going to jump back into the first round and get a guy for a left tackle. Yeah, and I, I thought that maybe it would be very expensive to be able to do that. Obviously, we have three um, third-round third picks now. 
And so it obviously opens a lot of things. But in the way that free agency has gone, like they have signed a crap load of guys, dude, an absolute crap load. Does that was that what does that tell you for me? Like, that's the question I'm asking myself. They've signed a crap load of guys of free agency. That's obviously it's one or two things. They could be allocating a lot of those resources that they have attained into moving up for high production and to in very uh, detailed two sections. Right. Or they could keep the assets they have and be able to throw spaghetti at the wall like they've done with free agency. And that's the big question that I have here. What is what is most likely going to happen? And I think that the draft plays a huge part in that because it's an organism in itself. Like Reed had asked to uh, Phillips saying there could be eight tackles taken in the first round. Well, what if it, that number is actually five or six when you get to 25? Do you need to still run up and get that? No, probably not. Um, so I think that plays a lot into it. But if it were to do that, I think it's like both the third round picks this year or possibly second round or next year, I think it was, uh, in order for them to move up. That's what was looking like. Mm-hmm. Next question from Deluxe. What can you draw from the free agents that were signed, Hall? And do you have a better sense of the team identity being formed? Yeah, um, I think it's about hard-nosed, tough players that are um, not only like good locker room guys, good culture guys, but can also that are – guys that are going to produce on the field as well. It's a lot of guys that are that have been backups or rotational guys or they have, they're coming off of down like a year or two that they're coming out here to kind of prove it like, hey, I do belong in this league. And uh, to Coach uh, Quinn, Dan Quinn is going to give me my chance and kind of trying to kind of, I guess, revitalize my career or give me that opportunity to become a everyday starter and um, kind of make something of my career. So I definitely think it's about – just kind of like Dan Quinn, it's about oh a redemption story, and I I can uh, proving all, proving everybody wrong and proving that I can do uh, be successful in this league and win in this league. And I think it's a, a hard nose, tough, hit you in the nose, bring your lunch pail to work every day type of culture that they're going to be setting. Um, I think the identity is a lot like Dan Quinn, and this is a very smart way to go about it. This is the island of misfit toys. Um, Dan Quinn was not high on the list of any head coach candidate when he was in the cycle, right? Um, And the same thing with Joe Witt. Joe Witt has been waiting for the opportunity to be a defensive coordinator, right? And he's he's saying, I'm ready, I'm ready. Even when somebody asked him in his intro presser, he kind of used like, dude, I've been ready since 2015. Don't question if I'm ready for this or not. And obviously that was to John Keim. Um, But I think that the free agency aspect is a lot like the Island of Misfit Toys, where these other guys have kind of flamed out in Jeremy Chin. Um, Frankie Luvo obviously was very productive, but it's not like he's getting all the glamour as a linebacker like the Patrick Queens, uh, so to speak, and Bobby Wagner's. But what it is is a bunch of guys that you're getting here that love to play football and are just hard-nosed, hard-hat kind of guys. And even though they had money, they didn't go out and throw money at people's faces, right? They got people that their identity. And the identity of the team is swarm. It's just swarm. It's, that's all I'm gaining from this. And, and what I like about most about their moves is that they are throwing everything out there to the point where where you do draft, you don't even have to rely on the draft for that production, so to speak. Like, they're backups in the sense of firewalls. If that does flame out, like Emmanuel Forbes last he did not perform all that well. But you're still in a position that you have signed somebody. If you were to draft somebody and not get that production, you'd have somebody behind you to be able to make that move. Um, this is just how I'm looking at it. Next question, will Reed ever appear on the pod again? <laughs> he was today for 25 minutes. Do you think we will <laughs> sign any more free agents with a reported $63 million remaining cap? And did Cleland Farrell actually sign yet? I haven't seen the confirmation. And, yeah, that was today. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it happened today. Um, as far as signing anyone else, I don't think it's going to be anyone that you would be like, kind of like the Bobby Wagners or the Allegheny's or Eckler, someone that's going to be probably – a day one starter that you're going to be signing. I think those kind of are over. You've seen the the kind of that next wave of free agency for us where we're signing depth pieces and kind of probably special teams guys, but obviously have the chance to make a name for themselves, work their way onto the field. But yeah, as far as like a, I don't even really even want to call it like a big name, but I just say like any, uh, any potential day one starters that are looked at as day one starters, I think that's over. I think they're uh, pretty much going to be focused on the draft from here on out. Yeah. What I love Unless, about- 
Unless someone randomly gets cut, you know, there's always those random cuts. But. What I randomly love about what I love about this, not randomly love. I what I love about this is the sixty three million Scott is that's what I was saying about free agency. You know, Adam Peters, a company in San Francisco, they did not spend a they've never spent huge money on free agents. What they've done is they've traded for players, then offered contract extensions in order to get the most production. Because typically when you're reaching free agency, there is a, a drop off, so to speak, of some sort in some way. Right. And so that that why in, what I love about this is this allows you the capability to let's say the Vikings did offer Justin Jefferson where you'd be able to get Justin Jefferson, pay him. And also still be able to get a quarterback in here and do it. And that's what I like. Like, say, like somebody like Stefan Diggs. Because we've heard rumors that Washington really wants a number one wide receiver. Well, they're in a position to be able to pay for one if one were to come available. And there's right. other guys out there you could go down that route. But obviously the draft is another aspect. But that's why I like having that $63 million because it leaves you open to other possibilities. Now the next question from Andy Lockhart in the UK. Oi! And the One Point Safety Show. Oi! Thank you, brother. Why is everyone riding J.J. McCarthy schlong before this upcoming draft? What is this guy's ceiling in your eyes? And he spelled schlong, S-C-L-O-N-G. So, schlong. Um, <laughs> um, schlong. His ceiling? Uh, I think his ceiling, I think the Vikings like him so much that I think his ceiling could be a Kirk Cousins type quarterback where I'm not going to say he's putting up like the godly numbers, like 30 plus touchdowns and all the yards that Kirk is putting up, but I'd say he's, he can put up Washington type Kirk numbers where it was like 25, the almost between that 25 to 30 range in touchdowns and 3,500 plus yards for a season. Like, I understand why people like JJ McCarthy because he has the intangibles as far as like he's a winner. He's a, obviously he's a leader, whether you're playing quarterback at a big he's school like Michigan. He's the type of quarterback that Kyle Shanahan could win with. Exactly. And Kevin O'Connell comes from that Kyle Shanahan right. type tree. So like I said, I think he's that Kirk Cousins type level of quarterback at his at his best, at its ceiling. And I do think that a guy like Kevin O'Connell, who it would be a perfect system for a guy like JJ McCarthy, that West Coast kind of McVay Shanahan tree, where he could be able to just play kind of like that rollout, that West Coast, get it out kind of point guard position, kind of like he did at Michigan, where he wasn't asked to do a whole lot, but he did just enough to get them to make the make enough plays. So, and he's young. Uh, so I think JJ uh, McCarthy's again, best fit was Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh's identity mm, matches perfectly with what JJ McCarthy offers. He's like a glorified Kenny Pickett. Like he's what Kenny Pickett was supposed to be. Yeah. 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 But I, I think that, uh, Kevin O'Connell sees a lot of Kirk cousins and JJ McCarthy. And that's why I think they're trying so hard to get up into the top five to get him. And it definitely helps to have your college head coach now as a head coach in the NFL who has very good standing with the media and agents around the NFL to be able to get your name out there to help you. You know, and obviously that's another layer here that we have to take into consideration because Harbaugh is talking to other coaches. This, saying, is, this is what you can do, you know. This is also another thing where, like, people look at Drake May and they're like, oh, well, look what he's done at, against this competition and look at this and da-da-da-da-da. Look what J.J. McCarthy did at Michigan. I, I think people are just like looking at that and being like, he's never going to get any better than that. They're not looking at what you are right now. They're looking at what you can project to be two, three, five, ten plus years down the road. So like, people like go on Twitter all the time, like, oh Drake May and da 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 da. That being you said, say the same thing about Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. They weren't guys that were like, especially a guy like Josh Allen. People weren't. He was played at Wyoming. You can talk about the competition he played. You can talk about this. Talk well, about did, that. Yeah. yeah, and look at the dude now. So like, they're. When guys come to the league, they're not finished products. And that's why I think people don't like – they just get caught up in, well, look what he did against Clemson. Okay, well, he can he can grow and play better, obviously. Like So it's just like – It's all about fit. It's about the actual plan for your quarterback, having a, a weapons around yeah. your quarterback, having a defense that can actually complement your quarterback, having a coaching staff to be able to have a plan involved, having the support of the organization. It all goes into it. Uh, that's why the Chicago Bears will – Always struggle with this. Um, I mean, look, they've done more for Caleb Williams than they've already done for Justin uh, Justin Williams, Justin Fields in three and a half years. So, it's true. I'm just saying. You're right. You're right. But that's why that they all like him, Andy. All right, everyone. That's gonna wrap us up for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to Coach Curl for coming by and being able to say goodbye to us and giving us a little bit of tidbit. Coach, um, I am floored 
that uh, Washington offered more. But uh, obviously there's politics and everything that goes involved with it. And Coach kind of, you know, ratted on me a little bit there. I kind of did know it before <laughs> everyone else did. But you know what? I'm not going to – whatever, whatever. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Have a great, safe week. Enjoy it. We appreciate you if you made it this far. You're a freaking champion. I'm Kyle. I'm Hall. And we'll see you guys on Thursday. Be safe, everybody. Washington football. Woo! What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with T-shirts, hoodies, and zip-up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time.